spiders, trains, spider trains, Easter eggs, pickles, and even old Eugene here. It's safe to say Choo Choo Charles has a bit of everything, including one big thread that we will talk about a little later. Welcome to the video where I hope to guide you through the glitchless speedrun of Choo Choo Charles. You may be wondering what the heck Choo Choo Charles even is. And uh, to sum it up here quickly while we wait on Eugene, our character is called upon to help destroy a giant spider train. Oh, I'm not kidding. Uh, while upgrading our own little train and helping out some folks along the way, being gifted some weapons and a few other things to help us out. So to start the runoff here, though, we're going to climb up this hill and we're going to head over to get a key for the garage. I guess it's a garage there on the left. But uh, yeah, we're going to grab that and proceed onward with the game. The pickups in this game are a little awkward, as you may see <laughs> a few times. This game is very charming, I will say right off the bat, but it does have um, its share of hiccups. But I'm really happy this we're in a world where this game exists. So after uh, getting to our train, we're going to open up our map and head to our first key location of the game, which is an NPC spot. And uh, yeah, we're going to be riding our train here with Charles. Or wait, Eugene. No, wait. It's Charles. So yes, Charles indeed is attacking. You'll notice I'm keeping the camera forward here. Uh, Eugene wants us to shoot him and... Well, it wouldn't matter. Charles is hungry and he wants himself some Eugene. So Eugene is no longer with us. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to press onward. So we're going to go ahead and jump ahead to the towards the end of our trip here. Once your marker gets to about 450 meters away, you just hop off your train and we're going to do some running here. And again, we're going to do a few jumps and cuts, mainly just because we're just holding forward through these sections. That's just to speed things up. So we're going to make it to our location and we're going to find Daryl here who gives us a side quest for Scrap. And first off, his quest calls for us using the lockpick, which he does give us as well. And uh, yeah, we do this little lockpicking minigame and uh, yeah, it'll give us even more Scrap. The reason we need Scrap, that is what we use to upgrade our train, which we will definitely need to do for the final segment of the game. So we finish up. We talk to Daryl one more time. Mission complete, just like that. It's a very quick, very speedrun friendly mission because it also is right across the way from where we're going to get the first main mission trigger. And talking to Helen here, she will go ahead and give us the mission to find the first of the Easter eggs. And yeah, they're not called Easter eggs, but they kind of are Easter eggs. <laughs> Uh, it's just the uh, yeah, it's an interesting game. But anyway, we're gonna wrap uh, head on forward here. And an interesting thing with this game, uh, I'm showing a pathing here instead of cutting ahead since it's a shorter walk. The game will require the speed run. I mean, will require you several times to walk just straight forward. But the big thing is, is you need to make sure you are pointed in the right direction. And that sounds easy, but this game has a lot of terrain that looks very similar. So getting yourself lined up correctly is crucial, or you will just pr pretty well kill your entire run. But we're going to drop down, grab some scrap, and pretty much grab all the scrap that's within, you know, visual range. Because it's, it is just so crucial, because... Not only does it upgrade our train, it will also keep our train alive. It is the way we heal in uh, combat. Um, so, yeah, we're going to make our way through here. I am going to skip a few pieces of scrap. I'll explain why here in a moment. Um, some in the way, some not. There's the first of the Easter eggs. This guy's shooting us, but we do not want to lose this guy. Him following me is actually a planned thing. And why is because... Well, we actually need to take some deaths. We will be doing several death warps over the course of this run. As when you die, 
you do respawn right at your train. So you notice that long walk we did, not to mention what was uh, cut out. It is completely nullified. But the key thing is we have to escape the cave. You know, we triggered a checkpoint right there. And now it'll the game will believe and know we have our first egg. So we're in the train with the egg, but all the way back here versus all the way where we walked. So now we're going to place our waypoint right about there. And it's uh, roughly another 1100 meters. But first, we're going to go ahead and upgrade our train, heal it from where Charles attacked earlier, level up our speed and damage. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and head on forward. And get prepped for another cut where we're going to head to a path that's going to lead to a very big upgrade. Before we do that, though, we do need to do one little adjustment to the uh, path thing here. We're going to have to actually change the tracks. It's a train game. You know, you should have some of this, right? So we're going to hit the brake right here, right when we see these signs on the left and right. You'll hit the brake. That's a good way to know you'll stop in time for the, uh, the switch. You have to back up and everything like that. And who wants to do that? It's a speed run. So hit the uh, hit the lever here, switch over. So we're heading to the right. And then proceed forward. Yep, on where we're going. One thing I do like about this game is it keeps everything moving. So you can look at your map and the train will keep going and everything like that. So we're jumping ahead to about the uh, 320 meters away from our destination. And once again, I'm kind of just showing that so we can see where you want to get off. And then once we're actually there, after the long walk there, we're going to grab some more scrap here, grab some dynamite, more scrap, lots of scrap laying around here. It's not all always in the same spots. And there are yellow crates, which I'll talk about a little later, that are completely random. But um, so just make sure you grab what you can. Be careful of the dynamite there. It can easily kill you. And standing here even can be dangerous if your health is low. And uh, yeah, we're going to run down here, grab that scrap, grab the. Uh, yeah, grab the uh, supplies here, and then we're going to head on to another NPC interaction. But again, notice I'm, I'm taking very specific pathing here so I can pick up all the scrap I can. Trying to pick it up. As. We will probably use every piece of it in this run. And um, might be thinking, is the boss super tough? Well, we'll have to wait and see when we get there, right? It will require a lot of scrap, but is it tough? Like I said, we'll see. So heading on forward here, we're going to be getting the crucial weapon of the run, the rocket launcher right there. That's what we get for doing the side quest there. It's called the Boomer, by the way. Very nice. And then uh, we're going to head up the steps here across the way. One thing again, another side quest linked right by the main quest. And uh, Greg's going to we're going to talk to Greg. And now we're going to jump off the top roof, the top of the uh, top floor, excuse me, and do this twice. That's going to kill us and allow us to go ahead and jump right back to our train. And so once again, now we have a couple of uh, more missions to do. We need to get a couple more Easter eggs. And um, we're going to have another side mission in there as well. Oh, uh, so it is a main mission, but not related to Easter eggs, I guess is what I'm trying to say. We're going to upgrade our train again, equip the rocket launcher. So just trying to be as ready as possible for when the time comes and we may need it. Uh, you will notice there's the yellow paint can there. Just a little note on that is the fact that you can collect various colors in this game, and there are 100% categories that uh, call for obtaining all the paint cans and doing all the side quests and everything like that. This one, we're just doing any percent, so we'll stick with the classic yellow. So we get off the train right about here, and... Yeah, we're going to have a nice long hike here, so we're going to go ahead and jump ahead yet again. And this is going to lead to a nice cabin here, and Gale is going to give us another mission. Again, grabbing all the scrap around his place. And we're going to just progress onward. 
I mentioned the 100% category. There is also an any percent category where you can do an interesting bit of tech that includes getting out of the train but keeping it moving. If you didn't realize, we the train will automatically stop the moment we leave it. So we're, you know, you're taking a, you're definitely altering things by having it reach a certain destination or point in time by, you know, glitching it ahead. It's, it's very, very nice. <laughs> but yeah, we're grabbing more scrap here. Then we're going to head our, uh, head over here to Paul, talk to him. He's going to give us the mission about destroying the bridge, prepping it for explosion, which will play into, come into play a little bit later, but we're going to do the mission right away. A big thing with the bridge is don't miss a bomb placement and watch your step. <laughs> it may, well, that might seem obvious, but it's a lot easier to just randomly walk yourself off here than you may think. I don't know why. I did it a couple of times over the uh, 97 attempts uh, I had at this uh, run. Making sure that you actually hit the correct hitbox to trigger the bomb being placed as well. But after we place all eight of them, we're going to head back here and talk to Paul yet again. That'll mark the mission complete. And there he is. The jump out of here, you can jump down here. It's a little tricky, but uh, just get yourself lined up the right way. It's mostly just getting yourself completely straight ahead. And uh, yeah, we're going to go and line ourselves up, take a nice turn, and head over to the next egg location. This one's pretty close. And grab more scrap on the way, some scrap on the rocks. Fall right down. You do take some damage there, not too much, though. It feels like fall damage is a little inconsistent, because that fall doesn't seem any shorter than the one we did from the uh, spot where we talked to Greg earlier, but... Yeah, it's just this game. <laughs> so we're going to head forward. Don't worry too much about the guys. I mean, they, there are runs that they can kill. But for the most part, they shouldn't be a problem. And just. Uh, just make sure you focus on getting to where you need to go, obviously. And um, you'll be fine. Right, grabbing more scrap, of course, and we're going to do the same thing as before, where uh, you, we need to get out and trigger a checkpoint before doing anything else. So we're going to keep running, keep running. Out of here, and now we're clear. So these guys here in front of us will do the job of uh, wiping us out. Right. Oh, geez, that guy missed right there. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they will miss. Sometimes it'll take them only two shots. Sometimes it'll take them four or five. It's a little inconsistent. So you'll notice here's one of the yellow crates I just I mentioned before. I gra ideally you don't want to have to grab any because that means you're relying on a lucky drop. That one there though, I go ahead and grab because it was right in my path of where I was heading. And uh made it very convenient. So we're going to go ahead and grab more scrap along the way here. There's this place again. There's it's all over the place. If you just kind of know where to look, but you'll notice my pathing around the backside of the fence there, things like that. I pretty well had an idea of where all of the ones in my way in my path were going to be. But we're going to enter this area to go get the third of the Easter eggs. And, uh, yeah, this one will. Yeah, again, be a little challenging, not, but again, if you know where you're going, the guard shouldn't be much trouble. Uh, now, there is a nightmare mode for this game that, well, all of a sudden, everything is a much more of a threat. It's a much, it's an aimed more at being a horror game as a whole, even, and very challenging, but uh, worth checking out if you want a darker experience with the game, darker, more dangerous experience with the game. So here we go. We're going to continue onward. Uh, if you notice, the game is a little stuttery, a little glitchy at times. Uh, I apologize for that. The game is just a little, uh, a little inconsistent, we'll just say, at times with its performance. 
But um, anyway, we uh, we head out, we grab the Easter egg, and we're going to head to this elevator. And once again, you probably know what's going to happen next. <laughs> we're going to trigger a checkpoint right there. We're going to run over and grab some of the scrap that's outside here. And uh, yeah. Another warp, the final warp. And we're on the final stretch of the game. You know, we're going to have to deal with that big threat. The big burden of the run. That is, of course, Charles, or should I say, Hell Charles. So we'll describe a little bit more of that in a moment, because first we got to jump out of the train one final time, and we have to make our way to a podium here where we will use all of the Easter eggs that will allow us to actually defeat Charles for good, but it turns him into a super angry more aggressive version of himself. We're going to open up the doors just running past the guys. Once you use them, you're free there. Immediately hit your train to get it going. And now, the tough part. The one part of this run that's truly difficult at times is hitting Charles. I'll fully admit my aim is not the best, but you need to hit headshots on him. Leg shots do next to nothing. Body shots do next to nothing. You need to hit headshots here. I have plenty of scrap, as you see there. I had 30 after healing there. And be careful when he gets close. This is where the speed upgrades are important. When he gets close, like right here, let's say, if you hit him with a rocket, the rocket will also damage your train as well. He's just hammering the train over and over. So what you want to do is ideally get it to where he's going to take like a little mini cutscene break. And then you go and heal. Yeah, like this right here. This is where you'd ideally want to heal. I had to sooner because my train HP had just gotten a little too low. Just keep hammering him. And we're doing all right on this run here. You kind of get into a groove, it feels like, with shooting him. Again, just heal. I've got nine scrap left. Just keep shooting him. He drains that health like mad. Hit him. He's teleporting all over. He gets, I don't know if he necessarily gets faster. It feels like he does. I think that's just more of the thought that, you know, the pressure's on and you're feeling some stress and everything like that. Not many more. There you go. The last hit, that's when the you split for your final time at 2230 in this run. Obviously, some things cut. If you'd like to see this run fully uncut, I'll post the link below in the uh, descript description. Uh, if you want to see the full thing without any of the cuts. But uh, yeah, there goes Charles. He's done. And that is the end of the Choo Choo Charles glitchless speed run. Overall, it's an all right run. It's a little... Um, it's very satisfying to complete because Hell Charles is very ch challenging, very uh, dangerous, but it does have a lot of downtime. It does have some little bugginess to it, so it's a mixed bag. But for now, I do want to just say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of the speedruns explained, whether they be indie games, big games, whatever. Uh, be sure to check out the video that's going to pop up on screen right about here. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.